special guest is a legendary actress from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in, yes, 1974. It's a character of Pam with my two co-hosts, John Gillian and Kevin Scott. Terry McMinn, how are you? Hello. Thank you, Scott. Nice to be with you guys. I'm really glad to, that you called me. Thank you very much. I'm glad that... Um, like I said to you earlier, I mean, and John's been trying and Kevin's been trying, trying to get some of these uh, classic. We like to do. We like to get actresses and actors from some of our classics that we grew up watching, you know. And I am glad that you're on here today. Well, I, I, another reason why your name came across again is a little film that you're in that you uh, had a little small part in. I don't know. Yeah, Butcher Boys. Maybe I'm wrong, but it is a very small part that I did for that. Originally, uh, Kim Hinkle, who was, you know, uh, Toby's uh, co-producer right. on Chainsaw, um, Kim called me, and um, I just couldn't be available at the time. He wanted Marilyn and I. He had a scene for Marilyn and I together, which I think would have just been terrific. Yes, it would you have know. Been. It would so, have um, unfortunately, he didn't, and by the time I was able to get there, he, he just had a small role left. <laughs> but uh, but he it, wanted to get me in. It was a good role, though. Scared me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was it was fine. It was fine. I I really would have you know I guess I just would have loved to have done a scene with us together. I think it would have been so much fun. Well, you know, you know? what? It can happen yet. I guarantee it's going to happen sooner or later. Yeah, I think so too. I've been you know I've been enjoying writing in the last. A few years, and uh, mainly writing for fun. Really, I wrote, you know, how Pam actually lived, and um, put. I posted all that. I posted it on my notes on Facebook, and fans actually loved it. Not good. And uh, yeah, uh, I call it "What Really Happened to Pam," and then I did part one, and everybody liked that. So I did part two, and then everybody said, "Well, part two is so much better than part one." So I said. Okay, well, I'll expand part one. So I went back in, and um, it's uh, it's got a lot of you know juicy details, and it goes into the history of the family of the Sawyers. I call them the Sawyers. I know that they actually, you know, with Gunner's new book out, you know, there's actually another name, but I use the Sawyers. Right. And how Leatherface got his name. Um, his relationship with um, his brother, you know, and his father and his grandfather, their mother. And then I go into, I just wrote about Pam and Sally, how they met, you know, how everybody met. Oh, wow. And uh, people have just really eaten it up. If you haven't read it, I hope you will, because uh, I had a lot of fun writing it, and I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah, especially definitely. Especially if you're Chainsaw fans, you know. Um, and a lot of people have said, oh, I wish you'd written, you know, the sequel. <laughs> 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 so um, I don't think they can do anything to me for writing um, about, you know, uh, Chainsaw. I, I couldn't, of course, produce anything on film. Right. But, um, but they can't. They can't make me not write about it. <laughs> right on. They cannot. You're right. Well, we're going right. to get into Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So, John, I'm going to let you start first, then Kevin, and then I'll... Right. Okay, Terry. Um, before we get into Chainsaw Massacre, can I ask how you got into acting in the first place as a starter? Yes. As a child... I wanted to escape my life. <laughs> so anyone who came over to my house, I forced them to play out scenes all day. And I was um, I was one of those kids that I was addicted to movies as a child. So I would watch from you know as much as I could. And so I, I got away with watching movies, you know, so I got addicted there. And then when I turned 13, I started taking private uh, diction lessons, and um, I worked with a man privately who trained me, and so I would do scenes. And then my aunt would get me to get up and perform them, and then I got into the whole high school. I did a, a persuasive one day on the death of Medgar Evers, 
you know, the civil rights worker. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a, my first speech class in the ninth grade, and there were 15 people, and there were 15 people in tears by the time I finished, and the teacher came up to me and said, have you ever thought about getting into acting? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, yes. I, well, no, no, I've never thought of it. You know? <laughs> That's funny. So, so that was uh, how I began. So I, I, you know, I went to tournaments and won all kinds of, you know, first places and everything. And then I went off to the nationals and so... That was how I got my start, and I was um, uh, got a scholarship to the Dallas Theater Center, in, uh, affiliated with Trinity University in San Antonio, and um, and that was just great experience, you know. So that was my beginning, and um, so that's how I started. Cool. In uh, we, we spoke before we started about. Um, Texas Jones Massacre being banned in the UK and it and it was for a while it was banned everywhere luckily in 1977 I was too young to go but my sister wanted me to come along to play Gooseberry with her boyfriend and he wanted to go and see Texas Chainsaw Massacre because for a while the ban was lifted only in London so that was my first exposure really to a horror film and I've said many times on the podcast with Scott and Gino and Kevin that not only is it the best horror film that's been made, I think it's the best film that's been made. Um, can you just tell us about your experience when you uh, got the role? Um, yes. Um, let's see. I was living in Austin, Texas, and I was going to, at that time, St. Edwards University. And I was doing uh, plays at their theater, which was a really popular theater at that time in the city because they called in people from L.A., people that were like, um, you know, had been big, but, you know, now like Mercedes McCambridge, who was quite big, you know, but, you know, as they got older, they uh, started doing theater because the, the roles weren't coming in. At that time, you couldn't cross over from television to film. Those days came later, but this was back, this was back when everything was on film, you know, it wasn't on, you didn't have all of the uh, technology that you have today. It was a different day and age, but, um, I was, uh, they, they saw my picture in the paper. I was doing a play with a man, uh, who was, star who had starred in a series called, uh, Gomer Pyle. Mm. Gomer Pyle was with Jim Neighbors, uh, and, uh, Gomer Pyle was a, uh, anyway, it was a popular television series, and Frank Sutton was his sergeant. And so uh, they saw my picture. They'd been to Houston. They'd been to Dallas. They'd been. They'd seen about 500 girls, is what I was told. And um, uh, I was one of the last ones that they auditioned. They'd been through UT, and um, I got to uh, go and audition. But you know, in those days, doing um, horror movies was kind of like doing porn because. The horror genre was really not uh, like it is today. It, it took off after Chainsaw. It took off, you know, and then you got Halloween and, and all of that. The Exorcist had just come out. But um, they saw my picture in the paper. I read for them. And I really didn't know, uh, you know, I hadn't done any film, and so I was skeptical because I didn't have an agent to protect me. And so I was, uh, you know, I was thinking, oh no, what's this going to lead to? And I hadn't really, I, I hadn't read the script, you know, they didn't give me a script to read. Um, it, the ball was in their court, not in mine. And so um, I talked to a friend and he said, well, you know, why don't you call him and tell him that you're really interested? Call him back. So I did. And Kim uh, took the call and he said, well, Terry, he said, uh, you know, why don't you come in and read again for Toby and wear some short shorts? 
Uh oh! I you know I got a, you know red flags were going off, but I thought okay, well you know. So um, I wore a little pair of white shorts, and um, I got on my bicycle that evening, and I you know rode uh, not very far. I was living right by the campus at University of Texas. And I rode over, they were auditioning in an apartment that they had rented, I guess, for that purpose, because it didn't look like anybody lived there. I couldn't tell. <laughs> but anyway, they um, they read me, and I guess they liked my shorts or something. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and so um, they cast me, you know. They, they, they called me back the next day, and it was so funny because... Well, it was funny to me, and probably wasn't to her, but there's a young woman that I was working with at the time who was also an actress. I was waiting tables, you know, to put myself through school and all that stuff. And uh, she wanted that role so badly. <laughs> she oh, was not no. happy. Not happy at all to hear. And, you know, at that time, I, I didn't know if I was lucky to get it or not. You know what I mean. Right. Mm -hmm. I, it was land of the unknown. So we were just all, you know, jump, going out to the end of the diving board and, you know, <laughs> diving in. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much what, you know, what occurred. Wow. Yeah. So, Kevin? Yeah, first of all, Terry, thank you so much. It is uh, such an honor to talk to you, and I want to echo John's sentiments that uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is, is for my money, uh, one of, if not the best horror movies ever made. And it's really unique. I, I think what I really love about it is it's, it's very rough, independent, but everybody was so talented that was involved with it. Uh, you know, cast, crew, everything. Uh, and did I, I'm sure you, you you it really took a while for the magnitude of, of how iconic that has become to really sink in. But did you have what did you think when you were making it? Um, well, I didn't really um, at that time. I really didn't know. I was uh, skeptical um, because you know here I was a girl on a meat hook. I was into serious. <laughs> I, I, I was into serious. You know, I took myself so seriously at that time. Um, my ego was far too large for my own good. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we've all been young before, and you know, you you really have to do so much protecting of yourself. And so, I was. I was a bit concerned because I wasn't wearing a lot of clothes for 1974. And um, I was concerned when, for instance, Daniel uh, came out one day and he was sitting under the swing with the camera. And I thought, I knew I was supposed to sit in the swing and that the camera was about, you know, 20 inches from my rear end. So I was... I was getting more and more concerned. They had just asked me if I would do some nude scenes. And so, you know, I had my own concerns at that time, and I had to protect myself. And I wasn't seeing the big picture. They, It was very hot. There were no trailers. Um, we sweated in the van for day after day after day after day. The van was closed up completely. Um it was just a, there wasn't, I, w I won't tell you that it was this, I mean, we got along well. Bill and I were got to be good friends on the set, especially because our scenes were all together, you know, and um, we would hang out um, under an old tree that sat in the front yard, that tree, you know, that was there. And, um, but it wasn't like one of those sets where everybody just falls in love with one another and, oh, it's so fabulous. And, you know, there, it wasn't like that. It was more of, what are they doing now? I don't know. <laughs> oh, did they set up? Oh, they set up in the wrong place? Oh, okay. Okay, what are we waiting for now? Oh, we're waiting for a class. There was a lot of, un there were many unknowns. And so, um, I would tell you that it was it was extremely 
you know, if anybody tells you that they knew that we had a hit, they're lying to you. I don't care who they are. And they may be saying that now. <laughs> <laughs> After the fact, right? They, they were not saying it back then, and they certainly never said it to me, you know. But I, I can tell you this. Um, all of us were very serious um, about our work. We took a lot of each one of us had a lot of pride. There wasn't one person in the cast nor in the crew that didn't really take it seriously. And I think that, that that's why you got a lot on the film. And, you know, not to say that uh, I, think, I think Daniel is one of, he's just a brilliant cinematographer. I don't know if you've seen his website or not, but his, you should go to his website. Um, he uh, has done he's done everybody's videos from geez Janet uh, Janet Jackson to um, what's her I mean just everybody yeah. you, if you Google his name you'll see you'll go oh wow and he does commercials that you'll see on television and go what a fabulous commercial you know <laughs> it's funny you should mention Daniel Pearl uh, I've been communicating with him and I, and I think we're going to be able to get him on the show and uh, oh curious. yeah he, he, you'll enjoy talking to him he's quite interesting and um, and I think he was so talented his wife at that time our makeup woman was Dottie she was and of course you know Toby Toby was so um you know, I think that's that's sort of why it happened Huh. And I mean, it's you mentioned that shot, and I'm so glad that you brought up Daniel Pearl, and you brought up the shot where, um, he and it's actually a dolly shot, the one you're talking about, where you're not wearing a lot, and uh, um, you're well, I wear it. the same thing through the whole thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't a lot of costume changes, but you know, yeah, I know that shot you mean. <laughs> <laughs> but that's. That's a beautiful shot, not you know, not just for the obvious reasons, but uh, the, everything about it, everything about that movie is is so unique. It is it is the standard for indie filmmaking to where you have very very talented people that don't have a lot to work with, but but end up getting stellar results because the talent is going to come through no matter what. And did did what was the the feeling of when you were making the film? That it, it probably was not uh, going to be. So it, I bet you never thought it was going to end up being a video nasty, did you? No, I tell you, um, I actually, the, you know, I never liked my work in it. And, um, you know, I didn't get a lot of calls from uh, anybody that had, you know, the producers or anything to say, Terry, you were fabulous, we loved it, you know. But I did see myself on commercials on television, but... I had so little confidence in myself overall, and so I actually sort of couldn't take it. At that time, it was so controversial, and I was auditioning for theater. I was auditioning for live stage, so I would walk into an interview, and I remember uh, one fellow looked at me, and he said, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, what is that? <laughs> and... I knew that I needed to take it off of my resume. And Marilyn, Bill, and I have discussed this. We all took it off of our resume. Didn't do us any good for about 10 years. Really? Hmm. Of course not. It was so controversial. Yeah. I mean, you know, there wasn't a following uh, at all. There was not a following. That evolved over the years. Right. But at that time everyone said, Oh, 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 oh you know. And so we had to uh unfortunately I didn't like it and I spent I went into hiding. Now everybody else I I, I stopped my acting about ten years after we had filmed it. And um, I, I went into doing some leg and foot modeling in New York, and then 
I just completely uh, decided not to do my acting. So what I did was I denied I was in it. <laughs> <laughs> People would say, oh, hey, I heard you were in that movie. And I look at them and I go, what movie? <laughs> and, I, you know, I've had people say, uh, I had a guy, I took flowers for his office, and I'd been doing them for three years. This was, oh, gosh, I guess it was about 1995 or so. And he said, I got to the office building, and he said, is that McMinn? Tell her to get in here. You know, and I thought, oh, no, did I screw up the flowers or what was wrong, you know? I looked at other people. I said, did I do something wrong? What was I doing? You know? I got into his office and he said, you never told me you were the girl on the meat hook from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> 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 well, don't feel bad. I didn't tell anybody I did it, you know? That's funny. <laughs> Yeah, so, anyway, but the rest of the gang came out, you know, um, 20 years ago. Yeah, Gunner used to come by and get me to sign pictures that he would take to conventions. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, when did you when did you finally realize to accept it? I mean, what around what, what year was that? You know what I mean? Uh, you're actually saying, yeah, I was in there. When you felt comfortable? Well, for me... Yeah, well, they were stalking me in the 90s, and um, Tim Harden was really stalking me, the guy that has the Chainsaw website, poor thing, and I just, you know, I was not going to come out because I, you know, I had a flower business, I was happy with doing that, I enjoyed my anonymity, I didn't want to, because uh, by that time it had become big, but I still didn't think I was any good in it, you know, I thought, oh. Gosh, I you know I I beat myself up for years, and so in 2007 I was managing a hotel on the beach, and you know my boss was saying you're going to do exactly what I tell you to do, you know, and I'd made him very wealthy because <laughs> <laughs> business around, you know, and I thought wow, and so um, they came to me to ask me to do the 2007 re-release. And I met with the, the guy, and I, I felt really bad. But by the time he got there, I had lost my nerve, and I just wasn't ready. And I said, Michael, I just can't do this. I can't do it right now. You know, it was a big deal to come out with that. You know right. what I mean? Right. And so um, uh, then I was I got unhappier in the job, and there was more of a jerk can I do it. Exactly what I tell you to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I decided. Well, gosh, they really do want me to come out. And I had an agent, a uh, young man, that called me, and he, he, you know, compared me to Greta Garbo, and I was like, oh, hmm. mm. <laughs> that's a little odd. Yeah, you know? right. <laughs> but you know, anyway, and I just started go googling online. I crept online because I was so afraid somebody would know I had been online. And I went to, uh, found my name, and I saw some YouTube, and I started watching it, and I read things that people said, and I was like, oh, they really do like it. Oh, okay. No, well, I better look at that again, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked at it about, you know, 10 or 15 times, and I'm just trying to think, trying to change my mind. To be honest with you, right. you know, to like say, Terry, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop beating yourself up. You did fine. You did fine. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. So that was that's the actual fact. That's that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, 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 and and also simultaneously, what happened was um, they asked me to do the the Blu-ray 2008 re-release. So it was perfect timing. I came out at the same time I did the 20-minute interview for the re-release. Oh, wow. But just Good as deal. A, just, yeah, just as a footnote on that, a, a couple of things. Uh, 
footnote on that is that um, the agent, the young fellow, was saying to me, oh, well, um, he said, you know, we need that shot of you in the shorts walking up to the house. You know, I said, oh, no, 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 we don't need to use that. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 let's not try to capitalize on that. You know, let's focus on, you know, and he said, Terry, that scene is taught in directing classes across the world. Oh, I'm telling you, I love that scene. That's one of my favorites. (laughs) (laughs) What's so funny is that I stopped breathing when he said that. I said, are you serious? You know, and I had to really look at that shot. I'd only seen it on film on the big screen one time. I never, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so um, I... I, I looked at the shot and I, I realized how what a beautiful shot it was and um, you know what a wonderful idea it was of Daniel and um, I realized that everybody loved the shot it was just that I you know was reading all these comments that they were making you know and so I, I developed a sense of humor at that moment in my life and I said, can we get that on billboards, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and so it's really, been a, it's really been an incredible amount of fun, you know. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. I would put that in my Christmas cards if I were you. It's that good. <laughs> yes, yes, I do, I do. Well, now I have no qualms. I push the shot when I'm at conventions. You know, they'll be going, oh, which one should I get? I said, oh, get the one in the shorts. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I know, I know you're too embarrassed, to, but that's the one you want. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, yeah, I can you her. work it. A complete turnaround, huh? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, and I, and I had a huge fight with Toby about it. He and I came to blows over it because I just didn't trust them. It was 15 inches from my butt, you know? <laughs> it was scary, and I had no, no one to protect me, and I knew that I was just so worried about those cheeks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> No yes. way to pull those shorts down. <laughs> it's it's a really unique movie. I mean, it's it's not just for the the gore sake because really a lot of it is suggestive and uh, you know it, it never really officially made the the infamous video nasties, but it was banned everywhere. John was talking about having a hard time to see it, you know, in the UK. Uh, I read too that. Uh, Toby Hooper tried to work with the MPAA to make it a PG so it would get a water theatrical release. Is that true? Oh, yeah, but, you know, come on. That was, yeah. that was released. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a really, oh, 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 yeah, Toby, sure, they're going to do that. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> oh, 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 good, good idea, Toby. No, it was simultaneously released. Uh, just almost at the same time that um, oh, what's the Marlon Brando butter scene um, t- Last Tango in Paris was released mm. and so that was extremely controversial that got gosh I think it was an R rating also they got away with an R rating but you know they were having a huge I mean things were different you guys are young you're so young <laughs> you don't understand and what it was like in the old days when we had to walk through the snow with our shoes. Oh, boy. <laughs> I, was in, I was in kindergarten when Chainsaw Massacre came out. There you go. There you go. So you, you don't understand that those red shorts at that time and, and, the, and the insinuate, I know that you don't see blood, but nobody, you know, you're just thinking Chainsaw? Chainsaw? You know, uh, it it was so, I mean, really controversial. It was banned. I mean, I've done interviews for Swedish TV. Um, I've done interviews for French, you know, for the Italians. It, you know, they're, I mean, like the Italians are incredibly Catholic. And so that was not 
kosher over there <laughs> at all. And um, it had a very hard time. I mean, it literally, you know, it didn't do any of us any good. We made no money from it, basically. You know, even after it became the most rented videos of the 80, video of the 80s. I'd be in a video store and I'd just see the poster everywhere and I'd read that it was a huge, you know, that they were, but we got nothing off of any of the merchandising, off of nothing. <laughs> so you can't, here you can't put it on your resume for 10 years and by that time I'm in another age category and I've gone into middle-aged woman. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you got to keep your, you got to develop a sense of humor at some yeah. point, at some point. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Answer your question. I'm not, I hope I didn't. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I mean, John and Kevin has said it's, it's their favorite. It is mine, too. I mean, I can remember, God, when I first saw it, it must have been, uh it was on VHS, I know that. It had to have been around 83. 80, 82, mm-hmm. and I can remember watching that film, and it, it had me fooled, because I was young, you know, it says, based on true events, and I mean, obviously it's not, but I, that sunk me into that movie, and then when I watched it, and, and we talk about the same scene, this one scene, it got to me, is when Leatherface pound that guy in the head with a sledgehammer, where it was, I said, that door slammed. Oh, what a powerful scene, when he hits Bill yes. Dale. Oh. Over the head, Kirk, my boyfriend. He hits Kirk over the head, and that, the way he closed that door. Yes. Um, and it was such a shock, you know, because, first of all, he's the first kill in the film. Yep. And so it takes you off guard because you've been waiting for this chainsaw thing that they've talked about, and all you've heard about is we're out of gas, it's hot, you know. Uh, Franklin won't shut up complaining. He's seen a little <laughs> bit of pie and the barbecue thing. But, you know, it, it is, it's great the way that they take you slowly to that point. And, you know, Bill is such a good actor. I mean, he's really, I think, one of the most, I, I think his performance is one of my favorites in the film, although I, I like everyone's performance. But um, he did such a wonderful job. And then, um, they had no blood. I mean, it's all insinuated, you know. And you'll say, I'll have people that'll say, oh, I, I can't watch horror movies. I can't watch something like that, Terry. You know, people that I meet. They'll say, well, I hope you don't mind, but, you know, and they just scoff at it. And, you know, it's, I can't watch bloody movies. And I go, there's no blood in it. <laughs> there's no blood. You know, and, and I think that's one of the reasons why this movie is so iconic is because the movie was made with no blood, and it was still yeah. scary, creepy. I I think Chainsaw Massacre. I think to me, what opened my eyes, even now as a reviewer, is the dead silence on that farm when you first got mm-hmm. that. Just any the windmill, any the windmill. Movie, I love that. Because you know something's going to happen, but you just don't know when or how. But that creepiness, yeah. oh, I love it. That's, you know, yeah, you know, I've heard stories, and I'm sure you can confirm, that I, I watched a documentary, I think it was in 86. It's called, it, I can't remember what they interviewed, Edwin O'Neill and all them cast members from the movie. And mm-hmm. they talked about the dinner table scene with the food about how it was yeah. so damn hot that the food was spoiling so quick. Is that true? Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, I had finished filming, but I know all about it because, you know, not only did they, you know, talk about it, but I, you know, talked with them about it a lot. But, yes, that uh, was a miserable time for them. It was um, so hot in the house, and you had all the lights on, and, you know, in, the, in Texas, it's 100 degrees, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you've got uh, a, a, a crew that's been working nonstop 24 hours, you know, to to because they've got everything set. They've got the food. They've got everything. And so the crew, I think that was when 
I'm pretty sure they walked off. They they came to blows. I mean, it was it was really they were miserable at right. that point. And um, it was a it was a te- you know it was a test of patience for everyone. Um, they had run out of money, so we were being paid deferred, i.e., equals. <laughs> and they gave them nothing. You know, I had lost my job, and uh, it was a rough time for everyone. Right. So, yes, it it was tough. I mean, what you see on film is great that we got it, but it is a miracle that it all came together. And you know, I'm, I mean, now I'm. We're all very, very grateful. I know Bill came out the same year I did, but Marilyn and Gunner and them had been, you know, out. But it was very hard. They were actually, uh, they were hitting Marilyn, you know. They were, I mean, she was, it was, uh, if Toby wanted something the way he wanted it, like when I kicked that bucket into the room, into the chicken room, uh, my shin hit the edge of a, a galvanized bucket, sharp edge on that bucket, and Toby thought it was so good that, you know, he wanted to redo it, so he redid it 13 times. Oof. So, yeah, and so it, things like that, and me, I fought Gunner, who was a 350-pound man at that time. He's lost weight now, but at that time in the film, he weighed that, and so here I was, 100 pounds, fighting uh, a guy all day. I mean, we had 30 takes of just the scene. One of the one of the places where he grabs, he's carrying me from the the stair from the outside in. Yeah, yeah. On just one, on just one shot, there were 30, 32 takes, 34 takes. So, you know, and you had film. You didn't have the technical that you have now. So wow. it was um, incredibly intensely, uh, you know, hard to hard on us, hard on us. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting me so upset now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, it, it's it's just it, it's an honor to have you on here because you know you you watch documentaries, and of course every fan has their own interpretation of what they read. But it's nice to hear you say it to the people to listen to that. I mean, it was a hundred degrees, it was hot, you know. But looking at it now, Terry, um, I know we mm-hmm. talked about this before, but looking at it now. Uh, almost 40 years later and you mentioned about coming out later on actually admitting that you were in the film now when you went to your first convention what was that experience like for you you know knowing that you finally you know I mean it, it is different for you how was it for you oh, for your experience it was it was so overwhelming I couldn't wrap my mind first of all around why they wanted to talk to me I knew I would heard about it and people you know but I hadn't seen anybody in the cast except Alan when I had known him when I had my flower business in Austin but at that time I was living in LA and so I really didn't know what to expect I didn't see any of the cast before I got to Cherry Hill New Jersey and I rode in the limousine over and Malcolm McDowell was sitting in the back of the limousine with Amanda Plummer talking about how Amanda was a virgin and you know he's so big everything that Malcolm does is huge yeah. you know? and he said oh she's a virgin you know <laughs> and I thought well I'm a virgin too you know I haven't ever done anything I've never done I didn't say anything of course I was very quiet like a little mouse then I got to the table the next morning and everybody was warning me Marilyn Ed Gunner, they were warning us that it was going. We were going to be overwhelmed. They knew this was a big convention. And right. my God, they were lined up, you know, to the door. I was stunned, and I mean, I remember one of the first ten people was this young girl who came up, and she started to cry, and she said, "Oh, Mr. Smith, I've been waiting to meet you." And I was like, oh, my God. You know? 
I said, well, darling, and I grabbed her hand across the table. I said, I'm here with you. Don't, you know, don't worry. It's okay. It's okay. So it was, it was extremely overwhelming, and I signed until the moment that I had to leave to get on the plane. I never stopped signing, you oh, know. wow. Congratulations. So, yeah. So it was really a lot of fun, and, and I must say, for all the years of, of not, you know, being great, it, it, it's just been a lot of fun, and it's been really uh, wonderful getting, it's, I'm looking forward to, to getting to do all the cast reunions, you know, with everybody this year. It's fun seeing people as they get older, and you know, yeah. you're you're no longer kids. I mean, Marilyn and I are very, very close friends. We talk all the time, and I hadn't seen her in twenty five, thirty five years. Oh wow! So yeah, so um, I I I've actually I've written a, a wonderful uh, story. I haven't written the story, but I have all of the notes and everything for uh, two spinsters, two spinsters, aging spinsters, and the, the thing is called Lydia and Linnell. And um, it's very dark. It's sort of like misery meets whatever happened to baby Jane meets Grey Gardens. And it's very dark. And um, so that's, stay tuned. Oh, wow, cool. Excellent. Yeah. yeah well, I'll, be, I, 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 I'll say it. And, the, and I'm sure these guys will say it too, but it is an honor to have you on here. Um, you know, I, like I said, I was overwhelmed with excitement that you wrote back to me because I've been searching for someone to come on the show to talk about the Chainsaw Massacre. It's everybody always wants to know, you know, a, a lot more about it. I mean, personally, you can hear it. But I, am, I just want to say thank you very much for taking time out to come on our show. Really oh, you're so sweet, all of you, to say that, and it's my pleasure to to talk to you. So please, um, please know that uh, it's been an honor to talk to you too, because I love talking to people who not only love the film but know about the film. You know, and uh, that that's always wonderful. It's also wonderful. I've had a few interviewers that. <laughs> Oh, well, I didn't see that Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> oh, my. God. Really? I would hang up. Click. Well, that was actually at a convention, and I did say to Marilyn, I said, Marilyn, we need to get back to our table. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn's so sweet, you know, and I'm so straightforward. I just said, Marilyn, I think we need to go and get back to our table. People. Yeah, you know, it was very, it was very funny. But anyway, I thank you so much. I appreciate your and um, uh, if you'll send me the link, yep. I'll put it on my uh, pages for you. Okay, uh, the best film ever. What did you, uh, what did you think of the recent Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D? Well, you know what I liked. I liked uh, uh, the fact that they used all of our characters in it. I just thought that. You know, after all these years, I mean, why they never put us all in the film, I just thought, you know, uh, gosh, why didn't they use us? Because I think it would have been, I know the fans really, really liked that part. And um, I I kind of wish that they would, uh, instead of just using my old footage, I think that they should use us all in real roles in the film, you know? That, yeah, that I think, I mean, what if they had, you know, well, go read my story, whatever, what really happened to Pam, and you'll see what I'm looking for. You know, I'm looking for the details about the characters, and um, they could have stuck, I think, to the story. I, I would find that more powerful. To me, that's what I'm looking for. But maybe that's just me. What did you guys think of it? I liked it for the simple fact is a lot of people when they watch Chainsaw Massacres they, they, they go to the dissection part of it. But I think what I like about the Chainsaw three D is they 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 kinda try to make it the literally the part two of the original. I mean it had that old mm-hmm. feel. Um it, mm-hmm. uh, another face I thought was very close to the original, except John has a different opinion about it, but um I liked overall. I liked it. I just didn't. I mean, I said this openly before. The only thing I don't like about when they make 
remake stuff is they have to put wrappers or something in it. I don't understand that part because there was no wrapper in the original. I mean, you know what I mean? Okay. I, I just don't understand that part. I know they try to get names in there and, and blah, 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 but all in all, I like the film. I mean, we interviewed, I interviewed Leatherface, the, the, the new one, uh, back in mm-hmm. February, so I liked it, but of course, the original is the best and the all-time best. And I just wish that they had used uh, the proper ages on the characters. Yes. Um, the ages was just so off that it, for me, it put me way off, you know, because I was expecting it to be realistic, and that was very unrealistic, so she was a beautiful girl, and she did an excellent job, and, you know, so did the young men, but um, I just, I, I I really well. You'll read my stories. And yes. You know, yes. But you'll the, see what I'm 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 talking about. But the, you know, as far as the quality of the product, you know, of the film, I thought that was excellent. Um, it was beautifully, you know, it looked the film looked beautiful. Yeah, yeah I agree. So, I agree. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So there there was a, there are a lot of good things about it, and so. Um, I wish them all the best, and, you know, I was really pleased that um, it was the easiest money I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, good, the good thing is, I think, about the film is that maybe somebody somebody that sees it may want to go back. It might encourage people to go back and watch the original. Oh, yes. Yes, so. I'm sure that they... they I'm sure that it has... Uh, caused a lot of, uh, you know, we get across, I mean, we get across the board generation after generation after generation who come up to us. I mean, you know, families that it's sort of like a ritual, they show it to their kids and, yeah, so, so that's really good because I do believe that it's, um, it's introduced and kids are so used to the massive amount of violence that's in the films today. Um, so a lot of them are disappointed in 74, you know. Um, they want, yeah, I know. They, want mm-hmm. that, they want that blade going through skin, you know. And so um, I asked one kid one day, I said, well, wouldn't you want to have a storyline, you know? And he said, nah. I said, so you just like the boobs and the, you know, this and the thing, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, I'm glad to find that out, you know. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Terry, what did you think of the 2003 remake? They they brought Daniel Pearl back to do the cinematography. What did you think about that one? Well, I thought it was filmed beautifully. And isn't that the one that Jessica Biel is in? Yep. Or is mm-hmm. that the That's one? That's the one. Yeah. Yeah, and like, you know, I'm, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I like that one a lot. I think uh, of all the remakes, I think that one is is the most truest to the spirit of the original. I think. I do too. I actually do too. I think uh, it, you know, it comes very close. I thought they did an excellent job with with that one. And um, of all of them, I would say that that one came the closest for yeah. me. I love it. Of, of of them, but um, but yeah, I agree with you, Kevin. It was Kevin, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, Kevin. <laughs> now, is there any links that you have that you want the listeners to check out? What your some of the stuff you're doing, or is there any links? Well, here's here's the way it works for me. You know, for a long time, I was allowing everything posted on my personal page. Um, but I got to the point where I just wanted my own identity because I'm into a lot of different things other than horror. Right. And so <clears throat> last January, I decided not to do my website anymore because it was too difficult to get the fellow to make changes on it, like if I'm going to a convention or whatever. <clears throat> and so I decided to do a Facebook business page for Pam. And so I have a page that's Pam the Original Chainsaw Gal. Oh, okay. And, yeah, and so that's listed on my Terry McMinn page. There's another Terry McMinn, T-E-R-I, one R. But she is not on any meat hooks, so you'll know. (laughs) 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 It's not her, but I'm trying to build Pam's page. 
And um, people will tag me, and what I try to do is I try to just share their picture, but I don't put it on my page. I go ahead and share it on Pam's, and I'm gently weaning people over to Pam's page. That way, it's darker, you know. Uh, it's it's like I I I'm more apt to put things that are darker on the other page on right. Pam's page, okay. and it's anything chainsaw related. So um, that's what I've been doing, and that's where I also make my announcements for appearances. I'm doing Spooky Empire, and we're in negotiations for several more. But I can't really talk about right. those yet because you know we haven't really gotten those. Uh, Got to wait till everything's set. Of course. But there will be several that will uh, will be doing. I'm sure this year. And so, um, but go. You can go to my two Facebook pages, and that's really all the time I have for those pages. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I can't really. <laughs> I mean, it's for a while. It was getting so inundating. You know, somebody will write me a message and they'll say, "Hey," <laughs> you know. <it's> like, oh, <laughs> hey. <laughs> you know, people are crazy. <laughs> they just. You know, and I can't respond to all these messages, but, you know, it's like, hey, what you doing? Well, <laughs> you know. Yeah, right, right. Now I'm more <laughs> you know honored now. I mean. Now I'm more honored now, right? <laughs> well, I mean, they they really, you know, it's, you know, and then you'll, I have one guy who's, you know, he's in love or something. I don't know what it is. You <laughs> 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 have not written me. Why have you not responded? Why are you not? If we, uh, if we want to become close, you'll know. It's like, oh, baby. Whoa. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not going to show this to my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask my boyfriend and let me see what he says, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. You are awesome. Yeah. It's great great to talk to you. I mean, you're. I'm just glad that you finally realized that it's time to say, okay, let's do this. Your yeah, whole, let's get on with it. Your whole life changed in a matter of uh, three minutes <laughs> as far as... Yeah, I, I'm t- I can't tell you. I'm so glad, you know. And, and I'm also, I was in the midst of careers, so I didn't have a lot of time, you know, to devote to right. it. But I've been able to rearrange my time so that I can do it. And I plan to do it for another at least year or two years, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah. You never know. You never know. But uh, but anyway, well, it's been a great pleasure talking to all three of you. Yes, thank you very much. Oh. Terry, can I just ask okay. one question before yes, you go? Of course. Of course. Um, uh, do you like horror movies? I do like some of them. I like, right. you know, good ones. But I do, I'm not into... Um, Schlock exploitation uh, kind of can, thing. Can I just ask uh, if you have a favorite? Well, I I would tell you that um, they're probably some of the older ones, you know, um, and it would be things like The Exorcist. I just thought it was so brilliantly done. Well said. Um, yeah. yeah, I I that's where my mind goes when uh, you talk about it, and I I like the poems. Things, and I loved Hitchcock, so um, I think De Palma did some of my favorites. And um, you know, I feel like I'm leaving people out, but those those would be some of my mm. headliners. Mm, no, the Exorcist is a good choice. Another thing I didn't get to bring up earlier, I read online today. Whether this is definitely true or not, I don't know. That the house from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was taken apart and reassembled somewhere in Texas as a restaurant. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, in fact, um, I'm supposed that, that to would, do... That would be a oh. wicked place for me and Kevin and Scott to go and have a meal. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting the barbecue. <laughs> yes, well, you'll have to call me when you come. You, you'll have to call... <laughs> That's great. Oh, I'll, I'll that have is ribs. so great. <laughs> no, no. Um, they... It, it was a restaurant, and they did. Uh, they, there was a plaque out front that says it was the original house. It was moved about oh, 75 miles away from its original location. The original location was north of Austin, which is where 
in my stories, I play to you exactly where we filmed it when I wrote the What Really Happened to Pam stories. And I give you even a history of Round Rock, the city that we filmed in. And um, that's a suburb of Austin, north of Austin. But they moved it to a place called Kingsland, which is very near LBJ's ranch, you know, President Johnson's ranch. Oh, wow. And, uh, and the people that had it, they closed that one, but they reopened it. And I'm actually supposed to do a documentary uh, with some young uh, fellows, um, they they really do good quality work. I've I've seen some of their stuff. They've sent it to me, and I just agreed um, to uh, work with them on their documentary um, that we'll be doing. And um, I'm really excited. It's it's they've redone the house beautifully, and um, it's completely different, of course, but it's still the house. And, That's cool. Um, yeah, so you should uh, definitely go there. But if you Google it, it it'll come up. And um, it's a new restaurant. I don't know the new name of it, but um, I'm sure if you Google enough, you'll you'll be able to locate the you know the house and see pictures of it. Lots of people have posted pictures on Facebook of it actually, and they've even posted some of them on my pages. But you know, people post so many things on my pages. <laughs> <'Cause that's fun. laughs> they are really cute. They're they're fanatics. Oh yeah. Hey, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I'm talking to three fanatics right now, aren't I? <laughs> you are. You are. <laughs> and that's what I love about you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, absolutely. I, Terry, I want to thank you for, for taking the time to speak with us, for being so gracious and for being uh, so approachable and accessible. And I cannot thank you enough. It It is really hard not to be a fanboy, and if I was there in person, I would probably be crying on your shoulder also, and I would need a hug. So thank you. For <laughs> You're quite welcome. It's my pleasure. Just don't tell anybody. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Okay, guys. Well, listen, I'm going to go now. Yep. You guys have a great evening, okay? All right, Terry. Thank you, Thank you very much. Take care of yourself. All right, you we'll, too. We'll Talk see. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. What happened was true. The most bizarre and brutal series of crimes in America. Just as real. Just as close. Just as terrifying as being there. Even if one of them survives, what will be left? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. After you stop screaming, you'll start talking about it.